What the hell is this? DOS is gone for a hot minute, and Microsoft buys Activision Blizzard for $16.7 billion. Only a couple days ago, Take-Two buying Zynga was the biggest acquisition in gaming history, and now we've got this happening and taking the gaming world by storm. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would a libertarian capitalist juggernaut like myself be weighing in on a giant corporate acquisition? Isn't that a bit out of your wheelhouse, Stas? Shouldn't you be writing another rap song or partying hardy with the ghost of Hugh Downs? Well, I'll have you know, I'm not only a video game reviewer person, but I'm a libertarian capitalist juggernaut. And I'm going to answer the question today of whether or not Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard is libertarian. In a free market, the invisible hand decides what's going to happen. Just like Phil Collins sang in his Smash Genesis hit Invisible Touch, she reaches in and grabs right hold of your heart. Assuming your heart is made of money, that is. But to cut right to the quick of it, yes, this is very much libertarian. You may not like it, but it's the epitome of libertarian economic principles. Now, some people have been crying out Monopoly, but just like how most people don't understand the rules of the game Monopoly, some people also understand what an actual Monopoly is. I mean, how many people do you know who play Monopoly the right way? Do you auction off properties when someone lands on it but doesn't buy it? You're supposed to. Do you add money to the free parking spot so people can claim it when they land on it? That's completely against the rules. I bet you don't even know how to buy houses and hotels properly, do you? Of course you don't. You have to be a free market titan like myself to get it. The free market thrives off of competition. Now, you can make arguments about whether or not it's libertarian to even break up a monopoly to begin with, but that's a question for another time. Instead, let's take a moment to establish that Microsoft's recent acquisitions do not make them a monopoly in any way. Now, yes, their purchase of ZeniMax Bethesda and now Activision Blizzard does put a lot of games, intellectual properties, and developers under their corporate umbrella. But it's hardly anywhere approaching a monopoly. Let's look at something that's actually borderline monopolistic, that the government has avoided with the subject of internet service providers. In rural areas, only one in four people have access to high-speed internet. And outside of that, there are 50 million Americans who only have one ISP they can choose from. This can pose a serious problem when it comes to the subject of data caps. What if your ISP throws a data cap on you, but you primarily use things like Hulu, YouTube, and Netflix to watch things? Well, that will chew through your data fast, leaving you with having to watch cable programming for entertainment. And that's exactly what they want you to do so they can make more money by selling you cable and internet as opposed to just internet. So when you have a business that is the only player in the game, so to say, that actively controls different elements of the market that can strong-arm consumers, that's where you have a problem. And without any other choice for customers, they're stuck. And it's not exactly easy for other companies to get in as they'd either have to put down their own fiber optic lines at a massive expense, or negotiate rights with the owners of the existing lines, which isn't going to happen either. Now, maybe you're thinking, in the world of video games, hasn't that basically happened with something like Electronic Arts and the rights to NFL games? And you'd be right. As a matter of fact, they were sued regarding it, settled it out of court, and the matter was never brought up again. But there's a legitimate issue in there still over the fact that if anyone else wanted to make a potentially better NFL game, they can't do it. Of course, the free market being the free market, all consumers would have to do is stop buying Madden games, which would then give the NFL a very little reason to sign an exclusivity deal with EA again, or vice versa. But since people want their official NFL-licensed video games, the purchasing continues. As for Microsoft, though, and its acquisitions, well, that's a different story. Let's take the Elder Scrolls games, for example. Before Microsoft bought ZeniMax Bethesda, Bethesda was free to develop and publish Elder Scrolls games for whatever they wanted. It was their intellectual property, after all. Now that Microsoft owns them, though, if they wanted to change that, they could. If they want to release Elder Scrolls 6 only on PC or Xbox, it's their choice. They own it. End of story. Just like you can't claim Nintendo as a monopoly on their intellectual properties because they created Mario, Link, Samus, etc., you can't claim Microsoft as a monopoly because they'll own Diablo, Overwatch, Call of Duty, and more. Of course, if you don't like it, you can vote with your dollar and not support any of those games if you wanted to go that route. One of the reasons crappy things continue to happen is because we continue to support them. Stop the support, stop the crap. And I know, that's much easier said than done, but how dedicated to your principles are you? That's even if Microsoft wants to go that route, though. They have to make a calculated analysis right now. What's going to be more profitable for them? 
releasing games solely on PC and Xbox in order to bring in gamers to those avenues? Or do they keep releasing multi-platform games thinking that they'll lose more money by missing out on sales on other consoles? Let's say they announce that Call of Duty will be exclusive to the Xbox. Will that cause enough people to buy an Xbox that the decision gets them more money than if they released it on the PlayStation as well? Maybe they'll just go with the timed exclusive instead. It's hard to say what will work best for them right now. Minecraft has remained multi-platform since the acquisition of Mojang Studios and has remained profitable and playable ever since. Nintendo, on the other hand, has kept their properties exclusive to their consoles, and the Switch has been the best-selling console for months. At the time of this writing, it's reached almost 93 million in sales and is still going strong. Regardless of that, Microsoft's acquisitions aren't exactly stifling the market either. As indie game developers continue to find success and thrive, there's no real threat right now of Microsoft being the only game in town, leaving consumers no choice except to buy an Xbox or upgrade their PC. There is, however, the very real threat of what this could do to the quality of titles. I mean, Microsoft purchased Skype and turned it into a janky mess of a communication device, hence why other things have risen up to provide alternatives. But because there are still indie games, because there's still Sony and Nintendo, because there's still other developers and publishers and consoles, this is in no way a monopoly of any kind. This is the very essence of libertarianism. It just may not be something you like. And you know what else you might not like? This could set off a string of other acquisitions. When a domino like this falls in line, it's highly likely that someone else is going to reach in to snatch a few of them away to stop them all from tumbling. Maybe this doesn't sound very funny to you. Maybe you're saying, Stas, where's the laughs and the jokes? And that's a good question. But you know what? Sometimes the economy isn't a laughing matter. But hey, what do I know? I'm just an ultra-superior capitalist free market god. Give me your soul!